WICC PBS Chicago. Welcome to the Chicago Bar Association's Justice and Law Weekly. I'm Dan Cotter, president of the Chicago Bar Association. Most people do not think of lawyers as talented singers and dancers. However, for many decades, members of the Chicago Bar Association have produced a musical show performed each December. Here to tell us about the bar show are Emma Smoller, Larry Aronson, and Cliff Berman. Ms. Smoller of the Smoller Law Office concentrates her practice in civil litigation. Mr. Aronson is a partner with the law firm of McDonnell, Bainan, Holbert, and Berghoff LLP. His practice concentrates in patent prosecution. Mr. Berman is Senior Vice President and General Counsel of the Catamaran Corporation. Welcome to all of you and thank you for coming. Thanks for having, Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. Cliff, get us started. Can you give us a brief history of the show? Sure. The, the first bar show was in 1924. It was actually called Christmas Spirits at that time. And it was just the holiday entertainment at the Chicago Bar Association's annual holiday party. Uh, then through the years, it expanded, uh, started inviting guests and the public to it. Um, but it was all male at that time. Not until the early 1970s did women uh, become members, thank God. And they had actually <laughs> had to sue for the right to get in. There was actually a, a lawsuit that was involved. It was settled. The women were in. Um, the show, uh, since 1997, the show has been at the Merle Reskin Theater um, downtown. So it's uh, really a professional experience at the theater. And Larry, can you describe the format of the bar show? It's a musical, but a lot of it's about local and national politics, right? Yeah, sure. So the, the show is, uh, we like to think of it as kind of a rip-roaring, uh, irreverent, uh, musical comedy review. Uh, it, it pokes fun at essentially anything in the news that's worth poking fun at, uh, ranging from um, local and national uh, political, sports, social, showbiz events and, 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 and people. Um, the show progresses through a sequence of, of uh, very cleverly written numbers uh, that uh, are to the tunes of current hits and classic standards and uh, we have really high-end, high-energy choreography and staging in the production as well. And the audience is just generally very blown away by the high production quality of the show, uh, given our high-end, talented performers and director and choreographer and uh, musicians. Cliff, we're gonna show a clip of uh, Somewhere Over the Healthcare Rainbow. Can you set up the scene for us? Sure. This is um, from last year's show, which was The Merry Old Land of Laws. So it was a parody of The Wizard of Oz. And uh, in this particular number, cast members Latham Williams and Jarjek Greenlee are portraying Barack and Michelle Obama. And they're singing one of Judy Garland's most famous songs. So. Well, let's take a look at this clip. <laughs> I know that one day we'll have affordable health care for all Americans. I just know it. Briefly, how did each of you become part of the bar show and how long have you been participating? Well, I guess I'll start because I'm, I'm probably the newest. Um, I This is my fourth year being in the bar show. And I answered an email uh, from a newsletter of the Chicago Bar Association that had an open call for auditions. I just showed up one day. I wanted to kind of expand my lawyer network a little more. And uh, the rest is history. Okay. Well, I got involved. Uh, this will be my 15th year in the show. and, and uh, I was looking for something to do to expand my fun outside of work. Uh, so uh, actually I was involved with the local community theater in Deerfield and uh, through a connection there I found out uh, about auditions for the bar show and auditioned and the rest is history. It's been an awesome experience so far and it will continue to be. 
Well, this is my 30th year, so I'm the old man in the group. Um, yeah, I, so I you know, started when I was a child. No, I, I, right on, I don't even think I had passed the bar when I auditioned. My, my folks had seen the show for years. My father was a judge at Berman, and he had come, come every year to the show, and he always told me how great it was, and I was involved in theater in high school and in college, and, and so I knew I was going to be in the bar show. I mean, it was sort of a plan. You know, this, one of the fun things about being a lawyer was going to be, be in this show, so, uh, and it has been, so it's just great. Is it any part of your practice part of uh, help you in getting ready for the show or in, in being on the show? Interesting question. Um, uh, litigator? I don't <laughs> yeah, actually, um, I think uh, my practice as a trial lawyer has helped uh, my performance in the show and vice versa. Actually, performing in the show has made me a lot more comfortable um, in front of all, all different kinds of audiences, including a jury. Good. It's given us, I mean, it gets confidence uh, to get up in front of uh, several hundred people uh, and sing uh, is, uh, you know, instills confidence and I think it, 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 you know, checks over into your law practice, I uh, hope, a little bit. Sure. I mean, each, each year the bar show has a different theme and name. How is that selected and what is the name and theme of this year's review? Um, well, to answer your first question, how is it selected, I think we, we usually uh, base it off of a musical or a movie and we do a little play on words so that there's law in the name. For example, one year it was Law Law Palooza. <laughs> we had Law Apocalypse Now, uh, Merry Old Land of Laws. This year the theme is Bar Wars, episode 6.5, The Phantom Menace. Museum. Um, the Phantom Museum, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? We really, we really play on the words. Um, and, and yes, so that's the name and theme of this year's show. And as you said, this year's bar show is Bar Wars episode 6.5, The Phantom Museum. What can people expect to see in here? Uh, is there going to be something in there about the new Lucas Museum? Oh yes, absolutely. I think um, one of the reasons that we chose Bar Wars episode 6.5, uh, first of all, the, as, as you may have heard, there's going to be a release of uh, Star Wars episode 7 upcoming next year. So it was a current film already on our minds. And also because of the Lucas Museum controversy uh, occurring right now with the mayor and the Friends of the Lake. Um, arguing over the location of the proposed museum. So we thought it would be a great way to incorporate those really well-known Star Wars characters, uh, Luke, Princess Leia, Yoda, Darth Vader, um, and sort of with a suspension of disbelief, place them in Chicago um, and have them uh, take on some of this controversy. But you could also expect to see all of our usual suspects. So, you know, Rahm Emanuel, you know, Quinn Rauner, we, that, that number still is not written. <laughs> Getting there. Um, the Obamas, uh, you know, Michelle Bachman, Sarah Palin, uh, Boehner, um, you know, the whole, and not only, you know, political, but also um, just, you know, people from celebrity, uh, Donald Trump, Donald Sterling, um, you know, J Jay Cutler, got to do a number about him. Um, so we really cover the gamut. It's not just politics. It's it's also just you know celebrities and things in the news for this year. Yeah. What part do each of you play in the production? Well, let me start with that. Um, I play Rahm Emanuel often in the show. In the last <laughs> several years, I've played Rahm. Uh, I get a lot of people telling me I look a lot like him, so uh, I think I'm a little bit typecast at this point as Rahm. <laughs> Uh, this is, it's been fun, yeah, and, and a whole assorted uh, number of other characters as well over the years. I hope I'm not totally typecast, but uh, I'm playing Chris Christie, <laughs> Governor Christie, and um, uh, he seems to be in the news every year, and um, singing a, a sort of a popular song from the movie Frozen, so <laughs> hopefully that'll work out for his character. And Emma? Um, I will be playing the part of Kate Middleton, which I am very happy about playing because I love her. Um, and she will be singing a song about royal life that will be based on a popular hit this year. Okay. <laughs> what do you do, if anything, to get into the character of these and many others? Uh, put on a wig. <laughs> 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 He's got more hair than I do. Um, <laughs> You know, that does, actually, that does help. It, it, the makeup, the wig, the costume, uh, sort of get you into the, you know, into the feeling. And uh, it, it's really about getting the lyrics out. It, it's, it's comedy where, you know, it, it's all about trying to make people laugh. And, and so that's like our focus is, you know, getting into the lyric. Yeah. And I would just sort of agree with, with Cliff about the wigs. Um, one year I played Hillary Clinton, who has hair very different than mine. So something <laughs> about just putting on that wig really made me feel like I became the part. 
Yeah, and, and I, uh, I guess when I go out there as Rom, I don't have to wear a wig. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of just in the character. I, I have played a number of uh, kind of hilarious, humorous characters with different voices, so it's trying to figure out what the right voice is for the character. Right? Whether it's an old man like this, or Kermit the Frog, or something <laughs> like that. Um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And I also tend to get in the Steve Martin look every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Giving away all the secrets. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> well, Larry, if, uh, speaking of clips, we'd like to show another clip. And can you set the scene for Ding Dong, The Gays Can Wed from 2013? Sure. So yeah, so this was from last year's show, The Merry Old Land of Laws. And um, uh, the show last year ran, as this year, in early December. And uh, just two weeks before the show opened, uh, Illinois legalized same-sex marriage. And uh, we had this number in the show. Uh, it, was, it was a gigantic hit, Ding Dong, The Gays Can Wed, a really amazing play on words. Uh, congrats to our writers, Cliff <laughs> Berman and David Miller, uh, on putting that one together. And um, so I play Rom in this number, and uh, Jeff Marks plays Quinn. And uh, the setup is we've just uh, sort of, it's, it's similar to how the, the Ding Dong, the, the Witch is Dead number occurs in The Wizard of Oz, uh, but the, the dialogue is all about uh, the same-sex same -sex marriages uh, being legalized. And so there you have it. Let's take a look at this clip. Yes, let the joyous news be spread. The gays of Chicago at last can wed. Besides singing, dancing, and acting in the show that we've seen already, cast members have other jobs. Cliff, you're a uh, co-head writer. What does that entail? Well, with my co-head writer, David Miller, we um, basically are working all year round on the show, um, you know, just trying to, basically watching the news always with an eye towards, will this be good in the bar show? Um, you know, and so, you know, coming up with characters and, and, and figuring out what songs might make sense for them and and so it really is a long process and then we layer on uh, the you know the, the creativity and involvement of a whole team which um, you know uh, some at this table and um, and and you know mold that through time and, and some songs still aren't even written so most of our songs are written at this point but like I said Quinn and Rauner can't write it yet because that hasn't happened and and so um, uh, you know it's, it's, a, it's a full year process it's, it's, what, it's my avocation <laughs> And Larry, you're head of, co head of marketing, and you design the program covers. Uh, can you tell us about that and that experience and what it entails? Sure. Well, uh, over the years, I have become, I guess, kind of a de facto the graphic artist of the of the bar show. I've done a lot of I've done the cover work, the cover graphic design work for, uh, gosh, something like five, six years at this point, and. Um, uh, we have, uh, it's interesting to look back at them, it's quite fun. Uh, the, typically what happens with the cover design process is I will get some sort of uh, idea from the writers and uh, sort of a general sense of where we want to head with it and then uh, work in Photoshop and other tools to create uh, what I hope is a high-end, uh, good, high-quality image uh, that we'll use. And uh, yeah, as head of marketing also, I, I head up and push people to sell tickets, um, which are available right now, barshow.com. <laughs> org <laughs> and um, uh, and uh, other sorts of uh, marketing moves to try to promote the show well good and Emma you are on the creative steering committee what does that committee do um, well first of all the, the bar show is really unique in that we're a very truly intergenerational uh, endeavor there are people who have just graduated law school and passed the bar all the way on up to people who've been in it for decades um, so the creative steering committee uh, basically what happens is we get uh, the head writers have sort of a bare bones idea of what the script is going to be and we we go around with this committee uh, we bounce ideas off one another to make sure that uh, the, the references are relevant so that there are different 
different viewpoints from different generations, different pop cultural references that uh, might resonate with, with someone who just passed the bar exam, for example. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, we come up with a script that we can all settle on and that's truly enjoyed by a big audience. Well, good. Th this show is uh, extremely unique in that it's written, performed, and produced by lawyers and judges. And you've, you've taken it on the road, correct? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we do um, road shows uh, throughout the, the, re the remainder of the year, in, in, in starting in January, actually, and then through around August. And for charities, various charities, um, we've been doing one at Oakton Community College for a long time. It's well attended. It's a great show. Um, it's, it, we do a scaled down show. It, it's more of an acoustic version. So in our, in our, in our show um, that's going to start in December, we'll, we'll have a larger orchestra. At our road shows, we just have a piano player. Uh, cast is a little smaller. Our, our normal cast is around 55 people. Road shows it'll be around 15 or 20 um, and uh, but it's the same numbers and uh, it's really uh, you know well received and we like being able to do that and, and benefit others in terms of charity so I think it's good for the Bar Association yeah it's fun to uh, have the fun of the bar show continue throughout the course of the year yeah um, it's, it's a good good time well, each of you have been participants in the show for several years you're all busy lawyers how do you find the time to be part of the show well, for me, um, it, it has become sort of a built-in part of the end of my year because it really, for people who are in the cast who aren't the, the head writers, it, it's really nice and efficient how it's packed into the end of the year. Um, and frankly, it's, it's beneficial not only for me personally, but for my business as well and, and meeting other colleagues. It's really great, so we just sort of build, build it into my schedule. Yeah, I would say the production staff is really respectful of our, our the fact that we are lawyers. Um, it, it couldn't happen with if we had the number of rehearsals and the, the time commitment that you might have in other productions, it probably wouldn't work for us. But given that we are all lawyers and we have our practices, uh, things are very well organized with the rehearsal schedules, and um, it works quite yeah. well. I mean, I, I, I've only practiced with the bar show is part of my life, so you know it's sort of natural. But but I think like if I were a litigator, I don't know if I could have made 30 straight shows without ever having a conflict. But being an in-house corporate counsel um, has helped a little bit in that regard. And frankly, the people that I work with, they they you know they're really bought into the show. They come every year, uh, they enjoy it. So so they're real supportive of our of the involvement. So we I appreciate that. How intense is the practice schedule? It, it's not really um, that that bad. It's um, uh, it, it picks up. We meet once a week for chorus, um, you know, starting in late late September, early October. Uh, we have uh, dance and staging rehearsals on Saturdays, and we don't start the daily once a day rehearsals until really mid November. So it's it's really it is condensed. Yeah, right after Thanksgiving. Uh, Actually, last year and this year are a little bit odd given how late Thanksgiving is, but typically the way it happens is that we have these regular weekly or so rehearsals, and then right after Thanksgiving we will rehearse Saturday, Sunday, every day, every night the following week, then Saturday and Sunday, and then Monday night, Tuesday night, and then the show starts Wednesday. So it's very intense, but it's great. Then one of the reasons it can work is that we have a number of different people with solos, and so the people are given their solos sort of early, and they get to learn. They can learn their so their solo. <laughs> some people have two solos, but um, so so you know that you, that you could sort of learn it on your own to some extent. Why should not non lawyers come to see this show? And where can they purchase tickets or find more information if they're interested? Uh, I'll address that. Uh, first of all, there is an I would say an older misconception about the bar show that the show appeals to just lawyers, I guess because it's called The Bar Show and it's put on by lawyers. Uh, but the show really does appeal to a wide variety of audiences, uh, and uh, young and old, and lawyer and non-lawyer. Uh, and, and that's, if you think about the type of subject matter that we cover, it's not, we're not limited. Uh, in fact, it's hardly focused on law, frankly. It's, it's much wider variety than that. So um, great appeal to a lot of different people. Tickets uh, are available online at the Chicago Bar Association site. Uh, you can access that at www.barshow.org. And um, they're available, uh, you can order them online and, uh, or by phone. And um, that's that. Yeah.
and there's shows when, Wednesday through Saturday evening and then matinee on Sunday? That's right. The show runs uh, December 3rd through the 7th this year at the Myrtle Reskin Theater in Chicago. And uh, the, the Wednesday through Saturday night shows are at 7.30 p.m. and the Sunday matinee is at 2 p.m. Emma, our last clip that we're going to show today is entitled Lawyers Let Loose. Can you tell us what is happening in, in the scene? Sure, yes. I remember this one. Um, this was from our show La La Palooza, which was a few years ago. And it's actually the opening number to the show, and it was actually the first number that I ever did with the bar show. And the scene is setting up, uh, you know, all the lawyers have had a stressful day, a stressful year, and they're just going to let loose at this convention that's in town, La La Palooza. And it's sung, to, it's sung and danced to the tune of Footloose, and it features uh, our really great choreography by our Jeff Award-winning choreographer choreographer and director Marla Lampert. Okay, well let's take a look at this clip. Cliff, you have written the lyrics uh, for the songs and the clips we have seen. How do you get your inspiration for these songs? Well, um, sometimes it's, I need to write a song for Rahm Emanuel, you know, what's he done this year, and then literally pulling out my volumes of, you know, Broadway books, pop books, you know, uh, rock books, um, uh, with songs and, and, and looking for something. Sometimes I'll start, I'll start with the song and try to, because there's a song I want to do and I say, hmm, what could work? So like for last year, um, you know, Ding Dong's a Gay can, Case Can Wet. We were doing The Wizard of Oz, so we knew we had to do that. So, you know, Ding Dong the Witch is dead. So it's got to be something that rhymes with dead. And, you know, you go through, the, we have a rhyming dictionary, uh, you know, uh, said, head, wed. Oh, Ding Dong, something can wed. And you just go through that process until you sort of hit on a nugget. So sometimes it's that way, and sometimes we just pick the character and say, you know, got to do something for Rom this year. What has he done this year? Um, and and uh, it could be a challenge sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it really works that way. And then just collaboration with David Miller, who co-writes and, and writes a lot of the songs, and, uh, and the, the steering committee, and we sort of all share ideas on other topics because, uh, you know, it, it, always collaboration is the way to go. And you create the titles as well? Um, this, this title is my title. And, um, but, uh, you know, again, we're, we're usually looking for typically like a, a popular musical, popular movie, uh, TV show, and then we do a play on words. Uh, this year it was really an event uh, sort of tied with a movie, right? So you've got the museum and then you've got Bar Star Wars coming out next year. So it's sort of a combination. So that's how we do it. We, we talked about the fact that you've been on the longest of the three here uh, for 30 years. Looking back on all the bar years you've done, is there a favorite or a favorite skit that you've done? Oh, um, well, I'm, I'm partial to David and my first show as head writers, Lollapalooza, you've heard a lot about that today. Uh, we, we really enjoyed doing that. Going back into the, the prior, uh, Julian Frazen was the head writer for like almost 40 years before us, great writer. Uh, he had so many great shows. Um, I was partial to a show um, from 98 called Gag Time. And in Gag Time, he did a suite of songs to Les Miserables, which was outstanding. And it was basically the Monica Lewinsky scandal. <laughs> and so, you know, Jean Valjean is, is Clinton, Inspector Javert is Ken Starr. I played Ken Starr. Um, and then, you know, Monica Lewinsky, I Dreamed of Dreams. And it was, it was just really a wonderful, everything fell in place. So, so that would be, I guess, my favorite um, overall set of numbers. Um, so. Yeah. And Larry, you've been on for 15 years. How about you? Favorite uh, skits or favorite show? Yeah, actually, my favorite uh, skit that I was involved, I've been involved with, was when I played uh, Kermit the Frog on stage. <laughs> uh, that was just awesome. I got to operate a Kermit puppet and uh, on stage with the puppet, and it was me, Kermit, and Bill Moyers uh, singing about all the <laughs> misunderstandings of uh, public television. So it was, it was kind of fun. Really a good time. That was a great skit.
Yeah. Thanks. And Emma, you've been on for four years. How about you? Favorite or? I have to say, hands down, uh, playing Hillary Clinton singing Call Me Maybe, uh -huh. which was Kylie Ray Jepsen's big, you know, teeny bopper hit. <laughs> um, uh, talking about uh, Call Me Maybe for running in 2016. <laughs> that was hands down one of my favorite numbers. And will, will Hillary appear in this year's episodes? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah she, she is. She plays a key role in that last number before the closer, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah. For the last several years, we mentioned the bar show has been performed at the Merle Ruskin Theater and is always a very professional production. For example, you have several wigs that we've discussed <laughs> and costumes worn throughout the show. How do you underwrite the cost of all of this stuff? Well, our, our main source of funding for the show is ticket sales and sponsorships. So uh, we want to sell as many tickets as we can, and the audience members should, or people should come and buy tickets. And by the way, I forgot to note when I was talking about tickets that we also offer a group discount for tickets. So uh, uh, for something on the order of 20 or more tickets, uh, it, the, the ticket price is reduced. So. Um, and sponsorships, we welcome sponsorships, uh, corporate sponsorships, and we have a number of uh, fantastic sponsors, and we would love to have some more, but that's where our money comes from. Okay. And again, for tickets, where, where should they go, Larry, and how do they find tickets? Visit www.barshow.org <laughs> and order your tickets now. <laughs> and any closing thoughts or any... Thing you want to leave us with for this year's show I and mean, a just, teaser? I welcome everybody, <laughs> you know, watching to come see the show. It, it, it's for everybody. Um, I, I love having first-time people see the show because they always see it and I, they always say, wow, I'm amazed at how talented these lawyers are. They're really talented singers and performers I never knew. Even if you've told them ahead of time that, that that's the case, they're still always amazed by that. And so I really think that, you know, it, and it's laugh out loud funny. People, not just chuckling, we get people that laugh out loud and that, that's our goal. And and it happens every year, so we're very proud of that. It is an amazing show, and so Cliff Berman, Emma Smoller, and Larry Aronson, thank you for sharing your stories about the Chicago Bar Association Bar Show. If you'd like to purchase tickets to the Bar Show or see additional clips, please visit barshow.org. I'm Dan Cotter. Thank you for watching the Chicago Bar Association's Justice and Law Weekly. Thank you.